we need to bring to you. And it's that promise today that I want us to have that expectation. And I want us to think about the signs and wonders that we've experienced. And maybe um, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart, and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. You know, are we thinking about how we're telling of the Lord's wonderful deeds in our lives? And I don't know if anybody was here last week, and anyone heard Polly's talk, and that really sat with me this week when I was thinking of it. And she gave us a challenge of how we're sharing the gospel. And I want maybe for us to think about this being an example about how we share with each one of ourselves within this room and outside of this room about how we're telling what the Lord's wonderful things in our lives. Um, okay, where are we? Hey! Hit it! Who am I that you are mindful of me? Thank you, Benjamin. When I'm wrong. Is it true that you are thinking of me? That you love me? It's amazing. I'm a friend of God. Well, no, we ought to do that under your, under your mask, wouldn't we? You can do a walk oh, with something in the throat. Okay, here we go. I'm a friend of God. Oh, 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 I'm a friend of God. Oh, oh, I'm a friend of God. He calls me friend. I'm a friend of God, oh, 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 I'm a friend of God, oh, oh, I'm a friend of God, because of me, friend. Who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I'm gone? Is it true that you are thinking of me, that you love me? It's amazing. I'm a friend of God. Oh, 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 I'm a friend of God. Oh, oh, I'm a friend of God. It calls me friend. I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. It calls me friend. God. Your kingdom come, reaching the near and far. We know 
Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Serene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, who hear them declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues, amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have too much wine. <clears throat> so Peter then addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and the smoke. The sun will be turned in darkness and the moon to love before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So the second reading is John chapter 15. Page 103. In the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you. When the Council comes, who I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth. Who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. All this I have told you so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father at all. I have told you this, so that when the time comes you will remember that I have warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. The work of the Holy Spirit, now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asked me where I am going. Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief, but I tell you this truth. It is for your, your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the council will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of good, and will go on to sin and righteousness and judgment. And will go on to sin because men do not believe in him. And will go on to righteousness because I am going to the Father, where you can see him no longer. And we go on to judgment because the prince of the world now stands condemned. I have much to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he fears. Sorry, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. You will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Permito ver na morte ou na parte dos anos que não vai ser I wonder if any of you have ever run out of petrol. Anyone confess to doing that? I have to say, I've never run out of petrol. Um, not because I'm really, really organised and keep my eye on the fuel. It's just I would die of embarrassment if the AA man turned up and found out all I'd done was just a lot of petrol in the car. I just dread the withering look. The same withering look that I received when I went into caution a couple of years ago to take my watch to have a new battery. So I, um, we just moved into caution. I went into uh, the shop and I said, um, my battery's ran. Can I have a new battery, please? And uh, the woman in the shop sort of took my watch and looked at it and she just gave me the most withering look. She said, do you do a responsible job? I said, oh, I do. That's the most you can you know, tell that from the watch. And she said, "No." She said, "We often find this happens." She said, "This isn't automatic. It doesn't take batteries." If you look at the back, where you can see clearly the inside of the watch, there is no battery. I felt such a fool. The withering look. <coughs> so I've never run out of petrol. I'm going to take us away from uh, empty fuel tanks and from. Uh, batteries that have run out, back to that passage that Peter read to us. The passage piece that everybody dreads, it's got all those names in it, hasn't it? Of people from all the known world coming together. And I want you to just enter this morning, just a little bit, into the lives of the first disciples and remember where they'd been for three years before they all gathered on that Pentecost morning. So for three years, they have been running on a full tank of spiritual fuel, if you like, because they've been with Jesus every day. They'd seen him do miracles. They'd heard him speak words that were life-changing. They'd seen healings. They'd seen incredible feedings of thousands. And then came Holy Week. And during that week, their spiritual fuel tank just emptied day by day until we get to Good Friday, where they're absolutely hitting their worst. And over the next three days, they are literally running on empty. They don't know what's going on. They've forgotten the words that Jesus had said to them. And then we get to Easter morning. Wow! Suddenly Jesus is there again. And the old spiritual fuel tank it's back where it should have been, back on full. And I've just lost my microphone, so I'll try and put it back on. Um, and so we put to Easter. And then we get six weeks of absolutely being on full blast. Do you know, they're seeing Jesus again. Okay, he comes and goes, but they're being really, really enthused until Ascension Day. And then they say goodbye to Jesus. Wonder what they thought. And clearly, in our reading this morning from John, we were told Jesus said to them, You know, I've got to go so someone better can come. But they forgot that and they were on empty again. Stay in Jerusalem and wait, Jesus said in the ascension. But for them, waiting was really, really difficult. But you know, what's really quite interesting is if you took the Bible and you read, actually the passage that you nearly read to us from chapter 1, the bit before Pentecost, we find the disciples gathering and what they decide to do is, because Judas had killed himself, they thought we'd better get an extra, we'd better get a replacement. So they cast lots between themselves to see who was going to be Judas's replacement. Why on earth did they do that? What a, what a ridiculous thing to do. But do you know what? When we're running on empty, when we are just relying on our own strength, 
Do you know, sometimes we need to do something, don't we? Have you ever been in that situation where, where you're waiting for something and you don't know what's going on? You don't know what to do, you've just got to do something. And that's where the disciples were at. And perhaps we shouldn't be too hard on them, because they didn't at that time have the Holy Spirit. But we do. And all of this brings us to where they were at Pentecost. And they gathered all together. They'd seen Jesus go away. They were waiting. And suddenly their spiritual content were filled as they never were before. With this incredible power and presence of God in that upper room. And Luke, who has written that, wasn't there in the upper room. So the information that he has got to be able to write to us in that comes from eyewitnesses. He spoke to the apostles and said, so what was it like? What was it like when the Holy Spirit came? And it was clearly an incredible experience, so incredible that they find it hard to describe. They say it was like the sound of wind. It was audible. The experience was audible. It was like a rushing wind. And it was definitely visible. It was what seemed to be tongues of flame. I don't know whether it was actual tongues of flame, but they said it seemed to be whatever it was, it was this audible, visual experience of God. And whatever it actually was, it was life changing. Because they went out and they were able, in the power of the Spirit, to preach, <coughs> to tell people about Jesus with real authority. Can you imagine what it was like? I was trying to think this week, what must it have been like to be so filled that you were sent out in the power of the Spirit? And it was, it was a pivotal moment in the history of our faith. Because never again do Christians need to be running on empty. Do the Holy Spirit's power is available every day, every minute, for every one of us. It was a pivotal moment. And that moment had been foretold centuries before by the prophet Joel. We're told that when Peter preached, he was saying, we're not drunk. This is odd, but you know, this was foretold years ago. He quotes from Joel, and he says, it says this in our scriptures. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. I realize I've, I've become a dreamer of vision in the last year. But there we go. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. On this Pentecost Sunday, 2021, I've got a simple question for you. Are you running on empty? You know, be honest with yourself. I don't need to tell you that this year has been the worst year in living memory. I've been a Christian for over 35 years. I've never known the time. I couldn't conceive of a time when churches would close or when singing praises to God would be forbidden. Can I imagine what it was? I couldn't imagine what it would be like. But we've been deprived of fellowship, of worship in the way that we would want. We've been deprived of, of laying hands on each other, praying for each other. And it would be so easy for us, and quite understandable, to have become disconnected with God. Some of us have been ill. Some of us have lost loved ones. We've missed filling up at the heavenly service station. And so our fuel gauge, our spiritual fuel gauge, on E. Possibly it might not be on E. I wonder if it's not on F either. And if that's you this morning, then there's some 
and who he is. And when Jesus was speaking to the disciples, he said this, he said, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks, finds. Those who knock at the door, the door will be opened. If you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will our Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? How much more will God the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Never again need Christians be far from the heavenly petrol station. Never do we need to run on empty. All we need to do is ask. God is offering us a gift this morning to be filled again with his Holy Spirit. And Max and I are going to um, facilitate a response. For those of you um, who feel moved to come and do that, I brought with me some olive oil, which is an Old Testament sign of the filling of the Holy Spirit. You might remember, if you know, um, the, the Old Testament, David was anointed with oil as a sign that God had blessed him with the Holy Spirit. Actually, our Queen, on her coronation day, was anointed with oil. That she too was given the Spirit for the task ahead of her. And this moment of her was so holy, so special, that it wanted to be filled. Because for her, it was a sacred moment. And we're offering this morning a sacred moment to come and to receive. But Max and I have got some oil. We've got some Q tips, they're all COVID compliant. <laughs> um, we would ask uh, in a few moments. Um, we're just going to play some quiet music. And then we just invite you, if you want to, to come and to receive. We're going to say a simple uh, prayer. We're just going to say, Come, Holy Spirit. And in fact, you open your hands and you say, Come, Holy Spirit. That makes it your prayer. And then we don't have to linger long at the front. We're not going to pray all the prayers. We're just going to do that simple act of asking God to fill us. And then what I suggest is you just go back to your seat and you continue to say, come on, Spirit. Now, we may not hear what sounds like a rushing wind. We might. We may not see what looks like tons of fire surrounding one another. But what we can be assured of, what Fleur said at the beginning of our service, is that when we ask, God turns up. When we come seeking, God finds us. So, I was running on empty this morning. Come, ask, receive. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
reaches beyond the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your justice like the ocean depths. You care for people and animals alike, O oh Lord. How precious is your unfailing love, O oh God. All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. You feed them from the abundance of your own hands, letting them drink from your river of delights. For you are the fountain of life, the light by which we see. Pour out your unfailing love on those who love you, 
give justice to those that always help. Dear Father, thank you that you promise that if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. Lord, we lift up our country to you, the thoughts and plans of those in authority. Thank you that if we commit our ways to you and trust you, you will help us. We pray that our government will commit their way to you, Father. Help our national and local government to make good plans for their people. We pray for resources to be put where needed. Deliver our government from seeking self gratification. Empower those in our government who know and follow you. Turn this nation back to you, O oh God. May our healthcare system reflect the love that you have for all, and our education system. Be one that educate, educates all children equally, caring for their body, mind, and soul. Thank you that you are a mighty God, and with you all things are possible. Raise up godly men and women to serve in strategic positions in our country. Thank you, dear God. We pray for the world and the many problems it faces. Oh Lord, we pray for climate change. Please help the rulers of our world to come to right and proper agreement to stop the ongoing damage that is being caused by greed, apathy, and ignorance. Lord, we cry out to you, your kingdom come, your will be done. We send rain to those countries where they are desperate for it and their crops may fail. We pray for the unrest in Israel. Please bring peace. We pray for the, of an end to the ill treatment of the Palestinian people. Let us help to cause this outbreak of violence. Show the leadership in Israel how to move forward for the sake of all. Thank you that you make a way where there seems to be no way. We lift up the problem of the ongoing COVID and we pray that sensible safety measures will be put in place around the world. We especially pray for India. Protect their medical staff. We pray for generosity from those countries who are in a position to help India. We pray for those who live in Ridgefield Crescent. Bless them this week. Their family life, marriages, children, old people and vulnerable. May they see the goodness of our God. We pray that you would please meet the needs of all those who are on our parish newsletter of rest and prayer. We lift up the concerns of our hearts to you, dear God. Please bless Max and Susan. We thank you for them. We pray for the mission of our dead Baptist churches. Please bring fruit that may be growing new. We also pray for the Diocese of Portsmouth as they look for new bishops. We pray that the next bishop will be your choice for Portsmouth and the surrounding area. We thank you that you hear us when we pray. And we will ask all these things in Jesus' name. Um, <coughs> those um, I just wanted to make it really, really clear that the anointing is not a one time deal, it's not a kind of an opportunity, and then when it's gone, you don't get it back again. Um, the anointing is available for us every day. You know, there's that passage of text that says, you know, every morning your blessings are in you. And that's so true. Um, and I think, let us not go from Sunday to Sunday experiencing the Holy Spirit, but let us take opportunity to fulfill the promises that God gave us 
actually that Holy Spirit can be with us at whatever time. Um, I think there are things that maybe in our heads we say are okay to pray for. Um, and there are things that maybe we don't give over to God. But that anointing is an opportunity to give our whole selves over. To recognise when Peter says, when we're in we don't have to continue on our own. And I think we can take it back one step further and say we're always empty without the Holy Spirit. Our lives are nothing if not filled with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And that's the power of the Trinity. So my prayer this week for you all is, is to recognise that you have that opportunity, but more than that, to expect it, to demand it. To understand that as a child of God, you deserve to be filled by the Holy Spirit, and you deserve to give your worries and your concerns over to God, and you should expect that those worries and concerns be met by our Father in the way that we would meet the concerns of our own children. And we are going to finish with a song, Mary Redeemer, and then we have a blessing after.